This figure shows an object in equilibrium. The object is a rod, A, B. This rod has the length of uh, 5 meters and it has a mass, 3.8 kilograms. Is hinged at A and is attached by a light cord from the other side to the wall. This rod has a mass 3.8 kilograms and also another weight or load of 22 newtons hangs from the rod at the distance D, okay, as you see here from here. This is a weight or a load. So part A, and also tension in the cord is 85 newtons. So let's clearly extract information and draw a free body diagram here on the other side so we can solve this problem in a better way. Okay, so we are dealing with such a case. This is the wall left side. And here is A. So from A, this beam is from there to here. And then from there, let me draw the cord with a different color. So the cord is like this. Okay. And is attached to another wall, okay? So the angle here is 53 degrees and one load hangs here at the distance D, which has the magnitude of 22 newtons. Also, the beam or the rod has uh, a mass, so when it has a mass, there is a gravitational force acting uh, on the center of this rod or this beam, which is almost here. So we draw another vector here, which shows the weight of this rod, mg, and also the cord, which has the force of tension force here is equal to 85 newtons. This makes the angle, if we extend, uh, this is the rod, and with the vertical axis, it makes the angle of 37 degrees. Okay, so this is part B. Now we are supposed to draw the free body diagram, which we are actually doing it, part A. So, but there are two other forces acting uh, from the hinge on the rod. And uh, obviously one of them must be uh, towards up because it keeps the rod up and the other one towards this direction. Okay, so let's call this horizontal one, the force acting from the hinge on the rod, let's call it FXH. That means the force which is towards x-axis from the hinge acting on the rod. And also the vertical one, let's call it FYH. That means that the force uh, acting from the hinge uh, on the rod, which is towards y-axis, okay? Towards our frame of reference. And also uh, we need to break down or split this tension force into two components because the tension force is not 
towards any of the axes x and y. So let's say here is f x t means tension force component which is towards x axis and the other one which goes up vertically it is f y t that means that the vertical component of tension force okay so this is the free body diagram that we have done there is no any other force acting on the rod so this is part a part a is done part b says determine the vertical and horizontal forces on the rod exerted by the hinge so it means that we are supposed to find f y h and f x h we are required to find the magnitude of these two forces so in order to do that we use the first condition of equilibrium which is sigma f x is equal to zero and sigma f y is equal to zero it means that the sum of of uh, all the forces acting on the rod which are towards x-axis must be equal to zero and similarly those acting on the rod towards vertical axis or y-axis must be equal to zero so we start by fx uh, horizontal one so if you look carefully the one heading to the left negative the one heading to the right positive so we have only two uh, horizontal forces one is minus f x h plus f x t is equal to zero so therefore uh, f x h will be equal to f x t and what is f x t f x t which we just made it up it means the uh, horizontal component of tension force is equal to let's say t tension force times uh, sine 37 degrees okay so the value of tension force is uh, 85 newtons and the value of uh, sine 37 degrees is equal to 0 0.601 if we want to be very very accurate so therefore f x t will be equal to 85 newtons times 0 0.61 0 0.601 which is equal to 51 newton therefore um, f x horizontal uh, force from the hinge acting on the rod is equal to 51 newtons so this is the horizontal components uh but how about the vertical one the vertical component because we want to find f y h also um, the vertical component of the force acting from the hinge on the rod uh, in this case we will use uh, this equation sigma f y is equal to zero so we will just follow is equal to zero whatever forces are acting vertically on the rod you see all the forces which are vertical here clearly those heading or towards down they are negative or minus and those heading up are positive so therefore we just substitute uh, it will be 
uh, which are negative so this is negative 22 newton mg which is the weight of the uh, rod is negative and also uh, that's it and what are positive the forces the vertical one component of the tension force that one is positive and the vertical component of the force from the hinge acting on the rod is also positive so substituting the numbers we will get uh, minus 22 newtons minus uh, the weight is uh, as here said the mass is 3.8 kilograms so minus 3.8 kilogram times this is m right mg and 9.8 meter per second squared okay so uh, which this amount will be equal to 37.24 newtons okay and then the rest plus f y h plus f y t is equal to zero and uh, so but what is f y t because uh, here the only unknown is f y h but f y t which we can just calculate it easily uh, we can say Fyt is equal to tension force times uh, cosine 37 degrees. And if you look carefully, if we multiply the tension force, uh, tension force by the cosine of 37, we can get the Fyt, right? So this will be equal to 85 newtons times 0 0.798, which this uh, will be equal to 67.83, okay? And uh, so, we substitute this into the equation above that we just wrote and by substituting that we will get f y h it means the vertical components of the hinge force acting on the rod is equal to minus 8.6 newton which we can say is equal to almost minus 9 Newton. So, but uh, why it is negative? Um, the the calculation shows the force is negative. Negative. So that means in our free body diagram, the direction of um, or is a vertical component of the hinge force is opposite. So we, we need to just correct it. Therefore, we need to. Uh, rewrite it in this way we see it is f h f y h must be towards this direction towards down because here the sign is negative so we took the sign at the beginning when we draw the free body diagram uh, we draw it upward but uh, finding the value of this force we realize that this is the value is negative so therefore we need to change the direction so the direction will be opposite and that is the free body diagram so we need to correct it okay so by changing the direction of the force on our free body diagram we do not need to take into consideration the negative sign anymore so that means the f y h the magnitude will be a positive 9 newtons or 8.6 newtons. We don't need to take the negative sign into consideration when we already 
change the direction above okay so this is part uh, a and b so but what about part c part c says determine d from the appropriate torque equation uh, we need to find the value of d d means the distance from the hinge to the uh, load which is 22 newton which hangs at this distance from the hinge so in order to do that we need to take the hinge as pivot or fulcrum then we will calculate all the uh, torque with respect to that fulcrum okay so in that case uh, i will draw the diagram here again below part c we will use the second condition of equilibrium sigma torque is equal to zero or sigma moment of force is equal to zero both mean the same thing so if we look carefully at the diagram we will see that when the hinge we take the hinge okay hinge as the fulcrum so the forces acting on the fulcrum uh, do not make any turning effect with respect to the fulcrum so we just remove those f uh, h f x h and f y h the forces of the hinge acting on the rod but we have here one force which is uh, 22 newtons another force which is mg which is 37.24 newtons and uh, here the angle is 53 degrees and here also the cord or the string which if we extend the rod we will realize because this makes the angle of 37 degrees with the uh, vertical axis so if we extend here is the extension of the rod we will realize that it makes the angle of 16 degrees with the extension of the rod okay uh, so therefore we need to also take into account this tension force and here we will split or break down this tension force into vertical and horizontal with respect to the rod because uh, remember turning effect must be the force must be perpendicular to the distance uh, and uh, distance from the hinge okay so here if we multiply this force by sine 16 degrees we will get a force which is perpendicular to this beam yeah so therefore this force will be t uh, sine 16 degrees okay that force is the force which creates or makes torque with respect to this hinge hinge a this is the hinge okay now and uh, but what about those other forces those other forces we can also uh, draw them like this because they are vectors so we can move vectors we can I can also again just draw to uh, just draw another graph here free body diagram to make it clear for you what is happening here we have d distance and then there is a force acting on that 22 so let me and this is the angle 53 degrees so i will draw the force here 22 so therefore this will be 53 degrees and if i want to multiply this force 
by the sine of this angle 53 I will get the force which is perpendicular to to the rod okay and this the magnitude of that that will be equal to uh, 22 newtons times sine 53 degrees another force which is the weight also similarly weight I will draw it above the rod or the beam and the angle here is 53 degrees so therefore if I multiply it by a sine of this 50 three degrees let me again make it clear so this is the same angle 53 53 i will get this force this vector which is also uh, the magnitude of mg times sine 53 okay so it will be 73.24 times sine 53 degrees and uh, the last one the um, the string one the tension force we already did that and that is also towards this direction because this is 16 degrees so therefore it will be towards this direction and that is t sine 16 degrees so as you see uh, the weight and the load are making clockwise torque with respect to the hinge and also the uh, string or the cord is making a anti-clockwise yeah anti-clockwise torque with respect to that hinge so we just uh, substitute the numbers in the equation it will be sigma torque is equal to zero so therefore multiplying sine so just as a reminder i will write sine 53 degrees is equal to 0 0.798 this is the value of uh, sine 53 degrees so by following the same rule we will end up with this equation which is 22 times 22 newtons times d times 0 0.798 which is the sine of uh, 53 degrees plus 37.24 newtons uh, time the distance which is here 2.5 meters and times 0 0.798 okay so these are positive they are positive because we take uh, let's say clockwise positive and anti-clockwise negative okay this is just a matter of agreement a deal uh, minus this force here we have negative one anti-clockwise which is 85 newtons time 5 meters times uh, 0 0.27 because the sine of uh, sine 60 degrees is equal to 0 0.275 okay so that will equal to zero so from now on we need to simplify the equation and by simplifying we will get to the point where d is equal to 2.42 meters so that is the answer to part c okay